The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 the month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. What disaster is so powerful? It unleashes a chain of mass pandemics, economic meltdowns, and violent food riots, all at the same time. NASA has already set the countdown timer, and right now the 21st century apocalypse is less than 13 months away. Former CIA Director James Woolsey says two-thirds of U.S. population could perish. In a matter of seconds, the world as we know it will cease to exist. The world's economy will be wiped out. Mass riots will follow. Ancient diseases will reemerge. How will you shield yourself and your loved ones from this upcoming apocalypse? Go to darkestdays.info to find out proven methods of protecting yourself, your loved ones, and even your entire community when this worst case scenario unravels. That's D A R K E S T D A Y S dot I N F O. Darkestdays.info. Go there before this life saving information becomes unavailable to the large public. Go to darkestdays.info now. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic, it's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this February 19th, 2015. I'm David Knight, your host. We'll be joined later in the show in the next hour by Dr. Hugo DeGarris, one of the pioneers of artificial intelligence. He's going to give us his very dystopian view of the future. But I think it's also important to talk to him because he represents, I think, the kind of paradox of ethics that we see with many people who work at all levels with the military industrial complex. Would you, because of intellectual curiosity, because of financial reward, whatever the reason, would you do things that you think are going to result in the deaths of hundreds, thousands, millions? In his case, he thinks that the Ardalek War will result in the death of billions. He talks about gigadeath. Nevertheless, he feels compelled to create it. So I'm very intrigued by this uh, paradox. And I want to talk to him about that as well as uh, his take on the state of the art of artificial intelligence, how he thinks this may happen. We were talking uh, just before the break about the FCC, and I want to get back to that. But very quickly, I want to let you know that this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by the special products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. And we have some specials on those products this month. We have a February special for super male and super female vitality, 20% off. You'll also find 15% off ProPure water filters. And we have a special that introduces uh, Ancient Defense, one of our new supplements there. If you buy two Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, 
You get one ancient defense for free. That's InfoWarsLife.com. That supports our operation. It's a primary aspect of support of our operation. Of course, support your local affiliates who carry this radio station as well as the sponsors that make that possible. Now, going back to the news here, the uh, FCC, uh, Mark Cuban was very upset by the idea that the FCC is enlarging its turf. And of course, they've been after this for quite some time. They are using the threat of large corporations shutting down and controlling your internet access. They're using that threat in order to create a regulatory mechanism that can do exactly that. They're saying, we don't want to have gatekeepers of the internet corporate gatekeepers of the internet. So we're going to set up government gatekeepers of the internet. Just look at how that has worked out for us with the FDA, with other regulatory agencies. They get captured by the very companies, Monsanto, et cetera, that they're supposed to regulate. They don't protect us. We don't want to have this kind of uh, expansive regulation. It wasn't that long ago that the same FCC uh, uh, committee member that uh, is blowing the whistle on these new secret rules that we're not allowed to look at. He also pointed out that they were looking at content. They were going to send flyers out to print media, which has nothing to do with their jurisdiction. But we see, just like we see the FAA trying to extend its jurisdiction over model planes, over paper airline, uh, airplanes, <laughs> paper airlines, we had a National Transportation Safety Board judge Slap them down and say, you don't have any authority over these lightweight models, these quadrocopters that are carrying cameras. They tried to uh, assess a $10,000 fine against a guy who was uh, working for the University of Virginia. He flew a five-pound styrofoam drone over the University of Virginia taking pictures. They tried to assess a $10,000 fine, and the judge slapped it down and said, if we go with the argument that you, the FAA, are trying to make, we're going to regulate even down to paper airplanes and balsa wood airplanes. But that was repealed. That was, uh, they appealed that decision, and uh, the NTSB board overruled that judge. And so now that's exactly what the FAA is doing. This is the way all of these bureaucracies are rolling out and expanding their power. It's not just Obama with his executive orders. It's these bureaucracies that are writing the laws, calling them regulations. But Congress no longer writes the laws. Congress isn't even allowed to see what the FCC is planning on doing to the internet. It's secret. There's over 300 pages. One of the commissioners who's blowing the whistle on that has seen it. But of course, the senators haven't. Senator Rand Paul, Mike Lee, others have complained about this. They're not allowed to see it. They're not allowed to see the trade agreements. They're being negotiated by corporations and transatlantic, transpacific uh, trade agreements. This is the kind of secretive government. Of course, Mark Cuban says, look, I wouldn't have a problem if you wanted to use the FCC or Congress. Not, he doesn't even say the FCC. He rightfully says Congress. Congress should pass the laws, not the bureaucracies. He says, I don't have an objection to Congress passing a law saying that Internet providers can't discriminate or block legal websites. See, that's the way it's going to be used. That's the whole purpose, however, of the FCC's movement behind this. Just take a look at this story. It's up on Infowars.com today. Federal government demands social media censorship. This is a Republican congressman from Texas, Ted Pope, uh, chair of the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Terrorism. See, it's always done in the name of security. And he's saying, you know, we need to, uh, we need to force Twitter to take stuff down. Look. It's not something that is not being, they have paid trolls. They've been doing it in Afghanistan. They do it here in CONUS in the continental United States. You can see their work, these paid Pentagon trolls and government homeland security trolls. If you want to see their work, just go to our website. Go to Infowars.com. You'll see them hanging out in the comments section. You'll see them on YouTube hanging out in the comments section. The same guys all the time. That's what they do. They actually war game that. They actually measure your response to see if they can push you in a certain uh, direction. That's what they've been doing for a long time. So, you know, they, they aren't necessarily uh, censoring uh, con content uh, from ISIS. They want to censor political content. That's what the FCC, uh, FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, wants to do as well. We also have a story up on Infowars.com. Google warns of U.S. government, quote, hacking any facility in the world. This is an obscure rule uh, that essentially says that the FBI needs to get search warrants from a judge that has jurisdiction. By removing that requirement, 
then they can have a judge, quote unquote, give them authority to go anywhere, even outside of this country. And of course, I guess that's kind of a novel idea that any branch of government would even bother to get a search warrant anymore with the kind of dragnet surveillance we have here. But this is what Google is saying. They say this opens the door to the US government hacking any facility in the world. They say FBI agents would be able to carry out covert raids on servers no matter where they were situated, giving the US government unfettered global access to vast amounts of private information. Now understand, they're not just talking really, that primarily they're talking here about a virtual hacking. In other words, when they talk about a covert raid, they're really talking primarily about a computer hack job on any server anywhere in the world. But understand that that isn't where it's going to stop. You're gonna wind up having American SWAT teams special forces descending on people. That's where this is going to stop. They say the nature of these government searches, they say, could take place anywhere in the world. The concern is not theoretical. This is what Google is saying. The nature of today's technology is such that warrants issued under the proposed amendment will in many cases end up authorizing the government to conduct searches outside the United States. Perhaps this is the way Google is trying to repair their reputation after having been started by the CIA and uh, being involved with a lot of this uh, government spying. Uh, now they're warning us what they, I guess they've been told the government is already getting ready to do. And of course, we just learned earlier this week that uh, there was uh, hacks, NSA hacks into uh, the lower level software, I'm sorry, hard, uh, software on the hard drives uh, into the firmware so that they could essentially boot up a spy program as the hard drives are turned on. And we've seen in the past that the uh, special uh, tactical group that the NSA has has been intercepting packages as they've been shipped out, changing the hardware, putting stuff into computers, into hard drives. This is some uh, spyware that's been discovered by a Russian uh, group, Kaspersky. And they pointed out that it shares exactly the same methods of working as Stutznet. And everybody understands that Stutznet was something that was done by the United States and, and Israeli military against the Iranians, attacking, interestingly enough, their hard drives. And no matter how many times they tried to wipe those hard drives, it just kept coming back because it was down at the boot level firmware. We talk many times about DARPA, as we mentioned uh, yesterday and uh, earlier today, the story from yesterday that DARPA is working on a matrix-like uh, hack to go into the spine and the back of the neck of straight out of um, the matrix. Of course, uh, perhaps they gave them some information. We, we see a lot of predictive programming going on in the movies. And of course, that's what we're going to be talking about in the next hour. We have one of the pioneers of artificial intelligence who foresees a Terminator-like future for us. A system where the uh, artificial intelligence becomes self-aware. Not only self-aware, but malevolent. So we're going to talk to him about his dystopian view, which stands in stark contrast to Ray Kurzweil's utopian view. And of course, Ray Kurzweil is someone who thinks that this is going to play out as cyborgs. He thinks he's going to merge with the machines. He calls it the singularity. And Dr. Nagaris calls it the single hilarity. He thinks that that's uh, not going to happen whatsoever. So we'll talk to him as to why he thinks it isn't going to be a merging of man and machine. But we'll also talk to him about how quickly he thinks this is going to happen. It's not just DARPA that's creating these types of over the top science fiction developments that we see. It's also an intelligence advanced research project called IARPA. And as we mentioned on the news briefly yesterday, uh, they're looking at ways to predict what's going to happen in society. One paper that they came out with said that uh, anticipatory intelligence is considered to be one of the next frontiers of big data research. And they see that their customers, the people that they're going to support in making these decisions are national security, law enforcement, and intelligence missions. And what are they looking for? Well, they're going to try to forecast things like disease outbreaks, elections. See, our national security and law enforcement needs to know who's going to win the next election. They also want to know about domestic political crises and civil unrest. So that's the types of things that they're looking at. And of course, this uh, agency really, which hasn't gotten a lot of attention like DARPA has, because we know we've seen all of these robotics projects that DARPA has come out with, the, uh, uh, the dogs. Uh, we, we just had a smaller version of Big Dog. Every time you see that thing, you've got somebody uh, walking up to it and kicking it so that you can see how it can regain its balance. 
Every time I look at that thing, I want to kick it as well. But uh,